This image has been making the rounds on Twitter today by several people. And I thought to myself, is this really something PragerU put out? Did they really say this? And uh, I asked people, hey, you know, what video is this from? And I got nothing. So I did a Google image search for that exact image. And it seems that it's just something that people make memes based off of. So, you know, there's that. I tried looking through PragerU's videos regarding immigration, and uh, so far I've come up empty-handed on that, but then I ran across one of their latest videos, the, the last fireside chat of the year video, and I ran across this. Okay, Jennifer 20, Roswell, Georgia. Why should men not wear dresses? So... This is a, a very important question, actually. And I'll answer with a question, and then I'll answer with an answer. Why should people not go around naked? Sanitary reasons. Some people have terrible butt hygiene. It's a very serious question. Why should people wear any clothing? Forget male, female. Why shouldn't people... I want you to answer in your mind right now. Why shouldn't people walk around naked? Obviously, if it's, if it's, not, uh, if it's too cold, they can't. But in, in the summer, anywhere, uh, and in temperate climates, uh, uh, anywhere, anytime. So it's an interesting question, isn't it? Why shouldn't people walk around naked? Do you know that San Francisco had a debate about this? They had a bill to uh, rescind the prohibition of walking around naked. And by one vote, it, uh, the, the bill did not pass. By one vote. They still said that you can't walk around fully naked in, in San Francisco. And by the way, there, the reasoning was it isn't sanitary. <laughs> naked people will sit on benches and, and it's not sanitary, which is nonsense, obviously. How many people sit on benches naked? How many people sit on benches naked? Well, I mean, if it was legal, a lot of people during the hot weather would sit on benches naked. And as I said, people have terrible butt hygiene. We don't need to be spreading human fecal matter around. It's, it's not a stupid argument. Now, I am about as nudist as you can get. Um, I don't celebrate that on my YouTube channel anymore. I used to. But, uh... I'm about as nudist as you can get, you know, I'm, I'm pro-nudity, but if we had nudity legal, then we would have to require that people put something on the seat before they sit down, like on a bus or on a, at, on a bench or something like that. There, we'd have to implement something saying, no, you must sit on a piece of cloth you take with you, you know, something on that order. There aren't that many benches in cities to begin with. What kind of strange argument is that, anyway? But uh, they, they couldn't admit that they really did believe there might be a deeper reason, which gets me to the male and female in a moment. After these messages, tired of the color of your skin? Tired of having skin? Not to worry, they're stripes. That's right, they're just stripes. Just apply our simple skin striping formula, free with our entfoliator package, and you can be free of the skin you're in. Easy on, easy off. The reason that we don't want people to walk with their genitals exposed, that's, that's what the issue is primarily with regard to nudity, is because, and people don't even know why, it's because we have a deep tradition called Judeo-Christian. Yeah, no duh. That says humans are not animals. Animals have their genitalia exposed, humans do not. So because we follow a bunch of rules, a bunch of man-made rules, and shame anyone who doesn't follow those rules, oh, oops, we're not animals suddenly. Yeah, we can just change reality that way, right? Yeah, if we're not animals, what are we? Oh, we're chosen by God, right? One of the biggest difference between, differences between humans and animals is clothing. Animals don't uh, wear clothing, and, and they're not self-conscious about their being naked. 
Well, I mean, right off the bat, caddisfly larvae create cases around their bodies with things that they find around them. Hermit crabs use shells from snails and such that they didn't create, but they want to protect their bodies, you know. I mean, most animals don't wear clothing because they don't really need to. They can survive reasonably without creating things to help them survive in the environment. The other thing is, they don't have the limbs that we do. You know, I, and I imagine if a number of intelligent animals had the kind of limbs that we do, that they might create things to help them survive in the environments as well. Um, humans are very intelligent. You combine that with our, our limbs and... Yeah, we're, we're going to create things. We're going to modify the environment around us to allow us to survive in those environments better. That's what we do. That doesn't mean we're any less animals than the other animals. It just means we do different things to survive. That, that's just the way it is. And nor are we self-conscious about animals being naked. Yes. Unfortunately, Judeo-Christian values teach people to be ashamed of their bodies, to be ashamed of all the things that make us up as animals, to feel guilt and shame in general, to cower in front of God, to be God-fearing people. Yes, yeah, so, so, uh... So damn... Wet. Wet, yes. Yeah, so damn, damn, wet. So... Damn, wet. The deepest reason for not for for objecting and not allowing people to walk around naked is that there are certain things that are intrinsic to being human that we want to preserve. No, uh, clothing isn't intrinsically human. It's something that humans create, but uh, preserving the notion of wearing clothes doesn't preserve anything human about us. And that comes ultimately from a Judeo-Christian outlook. Pre-Judeo-Christian outlook, a lot of societies, people did walk around naked. You're right. And there was nothing wrong with that. But people like you would call them savages. The Bible says the same thing about men and women. There is a biblical law, men cannot wear women's clothing. And there's another law that women cannot wear men's clothing. Well, that settles it then, right? You know, because after all, there are passages in the Bible that state that uh, if your child talks back to you, you have the right to kill them. And that is to preserve the distinction between male and female, which is fundamental to civilization. Look, I'll give you that the differences between male and female is important, and we shouldn't discount those differences. We shouldn't deny biology. But man versus woman is a social construct, and that shouldn't be written in stone. Blurring the distinction between male and female. Uh, this has nothing to do with the transgender. The transgender are not blurring the distinction. If, if a woman says, I am a man, so, and she then dresses like a man, takes a man's name, looks like a man, then it's a non-issue. There's no blurring of the male-female distinction. But when a man wears a dress, that is a deliberate blurring of the male-female distinction. Wait, so to you... And your beliefs, it's okay if a woman identifies as a man. If a woman wears men's clothing, assumes a man's name, all of that is fine to you. But if a man wears a dress 
it's the end of our civilization. And then you have an unraveling of the basic fundamental order of civilization. I know this is not the way people think because people don't think about the, the consequences of, of ending the Judeo-Christian tradition. Many people think about the consequences of ending the Judeo-Christian tradition. It doesn't mean the end of our civilization. It means change. Now, maybe to you, change means the end of the world as we know it, but it's certainly not the end of the world, and it's certainly not the end of our civilization. I've devoted my life to one overriding theme, and that is the bad consequences of secularism. Secularism is great for government. You don't believe that. You've proven you don't believe that, and just in the part that I've shown in this video so far. You don't think secularism is for the government. You think that your beliefs should be in the government. But it's not great for life. Well, as you can imagine, in other parts of his video that you're free to watch, I'll leave a link to it in the description bar, but in other parts of his video, he's basically trying to suggest that you can't really have real, decent morals without Judeo-Christianity, which we all know is a crock of shit, so... Anyway... Thanks for watching.